Hey again everybody, SMC here and I have a special guest, Sweet Pea. You want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> and I am here to talk to you a little bit about makeup, a little bit about crime scene. It's mainly about makeup today, but I do tell you a little bit about crime scene. And today, since I didn't have any time limit and because we weren't going anywhere since I didn't do my video yesterday, I tried a more experimental look and that's why I have so much makeup on which Sweet Pea said looked freaky <laughs> so that's what I get for experimenting but you know I wanted to try something a little bit new and that's what I did I feel like it looks a little bit freaky but just because I like never wear this much makeup on my face I also redid the hold on a sec the lip trick from last week but with a gloss that I found in my makeup tackle box and a different lip liner. And I'm actually really happy with those results. So if you stick around, I will show you how to get this look. <laughs> Freaky as it may be. Um, but as usual, my standard disclaimer that crime scene stories do contain, just by the nature of what they are, um, their contents can be sensitive, graphic, or disturbing, or all of the above. And viewer discretion is strongly advised. Like I said, this week's video, we do talk about crime scenes, nothing very graphic, so you could just watch it straight through. But if you're just here for the makeup and you're not here for anything related to crime scene or forensics, then go ahead and mute that audio and just watch the video. If you're having thoughts or feelings of hurting yourself or others, please, please, please talk to someone. And not just a text message, just actually get somebody to speak to you about these thoughts or feelings. That could be a family friend, a family member, a neighbor, someone from your church if that's what you're into. Um, it's really important that you actually talk it out. You can call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. That's 24-7 availability. That number is 1-800-273-TALK, 1-800-273-8255. Um, you can call your non-emergency line for your local law enforcement agency and that's usually pretty easy to find if you just look on their website and they should have a non-emergency dispatch phone number available or you can call 911 just really you if you have thoughts or feelings of hurting yourself or others you need to talk to someone and you need to do so before you end up doing something that uh, you can't take back and that you might really really regret so, with that out of the way, if you're still sticking around, hang around a little bit longer and you can watch me put my face on. And that'll be that. Alright, I will see you again soon. Oh, also consider subscribing if this is something that's interesting to you, makeup and or crime scene. Because I want to keep doing these videos every week for you. And it would be nice to get enough subscribers that I can actually personalize my channel with my name. So. See you again soon. Thanks. I wanna, Bye. I'm gonna tell one more thing. Okay, tell them. Give, 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 give 15,000 thumbs, thumbs up. 15,000 thumbs up. All right. Thank you very much. And see you soon. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Hey again. Thanks for hanging around. So today I am not pressed for time because I didn't make the video yesterday. I'm making it this morning. And I am going to try something a little more adventurous or Instagram-y with the eye look. And I'm also gonna revisit the faking lip injections technique now that I dug through my tackle box and I found a gloss. I've already moisturized my face and so I'm gonna just go about priming. And then I'm gonna use, spend more time on the eyes using a colorful um, Alice in Wonderland palette from Urban Decay, I think. And I'll probably even try to do like a legitimate cut crease today. So we'll see how that goes. I was having trouble trying to decide what to talk to you about crime scene wise. But um, not this past week, but the week prior 
was like the busiest week ever since I have gone to this new agency. And that was, of course, I don't typically work on Sundays. You know, I work Monday through Friday, or I'm regularly scheduled to be in the office Monday through Friday. But I'm the only crime scene investigator this agency has, so I'm on call all the time. And I got called out Sunday morning for a traffic crash involving <clears throat> two vehicles and one department vehicle. And the belief was that the two vehicles were stolen because we've been having people come down to our area and they do keep trying um, car doors until they find an unlocked door and then they rummage through and take money, guns, whatever might be in the car of value for them. But also, it seems what a lot of people have been doing is they have a spare vehicle key so like maybe they have two family vehicles both sitting there in the driveway and one car has the spare key to the other car. Well, if they leave that door unlocked, now they've got the key to your car and then they steal the car and you know keep going through the neighborhood looking for unlocked doors. Somebody had caught them, like they went outside for whatever and uh, spooked them and the guys ran off and then they called it into the police and then when one of our officers found them and started following them they ran like in these two vehicles so there was a short pursuit but they're not locals so they didn't know they had gone down a road where they a dead end road they couldn't get out and when they got down to the dead end they were like oh snap like <laughs> what are we gonna do now and that's when the accident happened. So they kind of crashed into one another, but one of them also crashed in to our vehicle that was behind them. So they called me out for that. And then as I'm there taking photos of the damaged vehicles, then they're like, oh, well, you know, there's gonna be some other cars involved that they had gotten into. And I said, yeah, that's fine. I can process those two. The two stolen vehicles get towed back to my vehicle processing bay and I do both of them and then I head out to the house where they had gotten spooked and I process that vehicle and then I had a whole list of like I think six others or five other cars that I needed to go process when that was all said and done I had worked nine hours that Sunday so <laughs> that was pretty tiring well, the next day was a holiday, so I didn't go in. And then Tuesday, I went into work and there was a vehicle for me to process in the processing bay that had another one that had fled when the officer tried to pull them over. And then they just dumped the car wherever. And so the officer was able to submit, oh, I think it's so-and-so. And I was just looking for anything that would, uh, you know, link back to that guy. I got called out for an accident. A woman had had a medical issue and she had crashed her car and that had gotten burned up. And there was also a child in the car, and, but both of the driver and passenger were transported before I got there. So really it was just photographing, having to tow it back to the processing bay because we weren't sure what was gonna happen with them. So that was another like three hours of overtime. So it was pretty difficult that week. But this past week really wasn't that bad. I only did a couple of things. So if you can see this um, palette, it's very colorful. There's a good mixture of metallics and shimmers. I did look online to see for some ideas for like a cool look to do and I don't really know how they did them. <laughs> so I'm just gonna try to figure something out. So I'm gonna try this transition color. Yeah, some weeks they're definitely busier than others. And it could be, you know, you might think you're just getting called out for a simple, you know, two cars plus an agency car crash, and then all of a sudden you're working all day on stuff. Um, 
it's just kind of the way it goes. But then there's, you know, plenty of weekends where they don't call me at all. So have you guys ever been in a car crash? Was it serious? Not serious? You can write it down in the comments. I have crashed a car before that, uh, where the airbags went off and I wasn't even going that fast, but I mean, I guess they're just designed to go off, you know, at whatever speed, but I feel like the airbag was the most damaging part of the crash, not even the crash other than messing up my car. And actually I've been in a, two car crashes. So that one, and then one pretty early on when I started driving. And like I've said before, I grew up in Alaska and it, this was like the first day where the snow was really sticking and I was driving to school and on those very first days it gets really, the roads are really slick and so a lot of people are just sliding off into the ditch and stuff like that and this wreck happened up ahead of me where there was like a car pulled over and I think somebody sort of got spooked a little and um, hit their brakes so they started sliding and then they hit that car and then another car saw this chain reaction and they started sliding and were involved and I watched all of this happen and then when I kind of was getting on the brakes, I just started sliding. And so I wrecked my car on my way to school that day. So this looks pretty cool. Just even this one color going in there. I was thinking about maybe trying a halo look. Honestly, I didn't study enough on what a halo actually is. So, And this is the second week where I've been using all of my new Sigma brushes, which are just phenomenal. So this is the Sigma Diffuse Crease E38. And I'm really loving using it. You can also go in, there's this Sigma Medium Sweeper E54 that really puts color in. So what can we do in that crease that might look pretty cool? I love this Salazen Grum color. But I'm only going to put it from just above the iris out to the corner. Right in that socket. What I do is I pick up the color on both sides because this brush is kind of flat. See? Then you can go in with that diffuse crease brush again because you see this is nice and round as I turn it and fluffy. And just holding it out here at the end so you can be gentle because I've also mentioned before that I am trying more technique over product. Because I feel like if you're using the correct technique, you don't necessarily have to break the bank on products. But of course, you know, buying more expensive makeup is probably going to be um, easier to blend or more highly pigmented so you don't have to use as much to get the desired look. But regardless, you gotta have a good technique or it's all gonna look kinda crappy, no matter how expensive your makeup is. And so with this, I'm just really trying to buff it into the other color. I'm not trying to take it too far downward. I'm really trying to keep it up above that outer corner of the socket. And the point uh, behind doing that is that I want to effectively lift the eye. I don't want it to appear to be drooping downward. If you get your color too far down and out, it's going to kind of pull that eye downward. And I don't want to look like that. I want my eyes to look lifted, nice and big and awake. Now we can try the actual cut crease part. So again, I have this Sephora cream eyeshadow. I hear someone coming. <laughs> and that's what I'm gonna use for my cut crease. I have this little brush that I'm gonna try for putting it on there. One second. And I'm gonna use this cream eyeshadow to try to do the cut crease. And I'm gonna use the smaller side of this little, it's just a cheap brush that I got in a Nipsey bag years ago. So, let's see if I can get this done. Well, <laughs> I 
I can tell you right now that is not as cool looking as I hoped it would be. So I think having a, an actual good brush to do a cut crease with would be a lot easier. Maybe, I don't know, maybe using something other than this cream. Well, and it was sold as like a sheer cream eyeshadow. So maybe that's why it doesn't seem to work as well. I don't know. We can still try to make this look cool. I feel like usually the point for a cut crease is that you have something, a color and contrast, and then the cut crease, and then, you know, the other contrasting color. So what I did, this is kind of a golden, orangey. So what would good, be good in contrast with that? This is really going out of my comfort zone, so I'm probably going to hate it. Or I might just hate it because it looks stupid, because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> There's always that possibility, too. Mm. That looks crazy, but I think it just looks crazy because I have way more extreme color on my eyes than I ever do, so I have to be a little tolerant of myself and not judge it too harshly yet. Now what I've done, especially since my cut crease wasn't very defined because of the product and or the brush, whatever, how I screwed it up, I actually, when I put the color on it, I just sort of softly went back and forth with my brush just to make it kind of smooth, blend it a little bit more so blending it in with the cream eyeshadow than in to the other color. And I wasn't taking it up, so I still, you can still see that I have that kind of golden orangey line. Hopefully, if I get too close, it'll be blurry. But you can see, I still have that line there before we start getting into the teal gold color below. And then just making sure it's in that socket real well so it's not patchy. And then all the way down to the lash line. Now something I've been doing the past couple of days, which has been kind of helping to make a, a nicer looking winged liner instead of just using that uh, cream eyeliner I have. I have been going in with a dark or a black and it's surprising enough this doesn't have a black but it does have a pretty dark blue and then I've just been putting it right in the corner just a little bitty line while trying to. I've actually been using this brush to do it, not that round one. So with that same uh, medium sweeper, I just put it on one side though, not on both. And then I can make my line. That's just a continuation from the lower lash line. That's the angle. And then I just tap a little bit of color around on this outer corner and I don't go out past that line I made. And I'll do that on this side too. So make sure you got your angle right. Because if you don't, wherever you put that color is where it's going to be. And just slightly tapping in some of that color on this outer corner, outer lash line. Try to make sure it's even, the amount of color. Then we could use this one. This is the Dome Utility E34. It's densely packed and rounded. And you can hold it out here so you're being gentle and just kind of use that to buff and smudge a little. Just on this outer corner. 
need a mirror closer to my face. So I can see better what I'm doing. And just remember, don't go outside of that angle that you've already created. You can take it up higher. I probably should have practiced this look before just doing it, but you know, it's supposed to be fun, <clears throat> and you guys are here to learn with me, so it's all right if it's not the best. I just have a regular black pencil. I'm going to go through and line all the way across and do a little tiny line just on the inside of that angle of color that we've already put. I did put it on a little bit heavier to the outside because I'm going to smudge for my wing. It's not going to be super defined, but having that darker color already, making that little angle and then just the black, it makes the, I think it makes the wing look um, more polished and especially because when I use the cream, uh, it just any tiny mistake it just shows up so it's like either redo it or live with it for the day which since every day I'm getting ready for work I don't have time to redo it today I have a little bit more time but I still I don't want to redo everything that I just did and try to wipe stuff off so this is just something that I've tried the last few days that really worked that so even if it's the angles a little off it's not as noticeable because it's kind of smoked out. So now, just with the smudging brush, I'm going to go along and smudge them both in. There we go. Now I'm losing my light again, so now it looks super dark. Let me see if I can fix that really quick. I wonder if I can fix it while it's recording. Time for a test. Uh, nope. Well, hopefully that cloud will go away soon because it looks crazy being this dark. Now, they are not equal, unfortunately. This one, I feel like it has a really pretty, nice point to it. And I only got that point, just I went a little further out with the smudge brush and did one nice sweep in. And that's what made that point. And then I worked around the point from there. This one, it got a little bit fatter and I tried to do the point out nicely, but it still didn't work. But it's kind of hidden because of that darker, dark denim, almost black, gray um, color we put in there. It's just not as noticeable, thankfully. And this is just that same um, diffused crease brush that I've been using. Just going to come in here. I'm going to try to avoid the eye pencil as much as possible because I don't want to wipe it everywhere. And just kind of blend in that darker color. Blend it up through the socket along that top edge. That it looks wild. <laughs> it's like I said, it's way more color and way more adventurous color than I ever put on my face. The eyebrow pencil, I mean, I'm still happy with this kit. Um, I'm not all that adept at using it. I just try to keep my eyebrows in a neutral position, not up or down or doing anything crazy. And I use this bigger one to just fill in mainly here where it's really kind of sparse and get myself a nice arch going. Same thing here. 
Wow, that Amazon truck has a weird reverse alert. If you guys can hear it. I'm not sure why he's backing up so far. He could just pull forward. And then you go in with this finer pencil that really is meant for drawing individual hairs. I kind of put some here to try to bring it in a little bit because they're kind of far apart. I d often I go against the growth of the hair because I really want to get this pencil in and down to the skin. And then I can try to put a few in here. Close the door behind you, please. And can you push the button on that video? Thank you. Did you drink your Capri Sun? I don't think so. You don't think so? Did you want your water bottle? What's the matter? Why are you whispering? Why are you sad? What? How can they all be boring? They play the same one, and I don't like that. And I really want you to be done. I'm almost done. Cause I'm hungry. Okay. I'm mac and cheese. Alrighty, mac and cheese it will be. And now here's the gel. I try to concentrate the gel more on the outside where they're really kind of thin. And I'm getting it all over my face with no uh, Q-tip in sight, so. I'm gonna have to take care of that and take care of some macaroni and cheese, so I'll be right back. Okay, I got that taken care of and now I can just use the little brush end and just sort of comb those into place. Because it definitely has been enough time that that gel hardened up. Perfect. So one thing that I said in a video, maybe it was last week, about this, which is my Flat Kabuki F80. I said I was using it more and I was tapping. Well, when you use a brush like this, in that way it actually doesn't feel great because there's longer bristles and shorter bristles and so it feels almost kind of pokey i do still moisten it with some of this moisture spray it really is meant to ugh, and i have lip liner on my hand so i better get rid of that this type of brush really feels more like it is meant for brushing onto your face so instead of feeling pokey and weird it actually feels really nice so disregard my last bit of advice about tapping it into your face and just like gently brush it around. I think you will be pleasantly surprised at how much better it feels. Oh, I forgot mascara. Well, I can do that next. And I was thinking, oh, well, if I'm brushing it onto my face, I'm going to use so much more product. But I really don't use much more. In fact, I'm even, I'm kind of using the same amount as I would with a beauty blender sponge. And it almost seems like it's a bit too much. So this is really working well at moving that product around and getting it into a nice layer on my face when used correctly. Plus you're less apt to have areas that aren't blended when doing it that way. Now I can go in with a little bit of concealer for the places that aren't as covered as I would like. Once I have it on there, I also have the Sigma Precision 4D HD, like little mini 
kabuki brush. It's wonderful. I've really just been using it on my concealer, but you can just lightly tap a little with one of these sides because it's a pyramid shape. So you have four triangular sides. You also have a point for more precision work. But what I'm just trying to do is get the concealer just blended nicely in. I see it's small enough that it really can get up to the corner of the eye. Even better and probably with more dexterity than a finger. I don't like putting too much of that concealer here because it's so much lighter than my skin. I feel like it's really noticeable. So I try to bring it across where that all the darkness is. And I try to not use too much. Maybe I will put a little bit of eyeshadow down here on the bottom. And that will help to darken it some. I really just don't want the concealer to be super noticeable in that it's a bunch of bright blotches on my face. Because then it's drawing attention and kind of putting a spotlight on these things that I'm trying to cover up. Go in with a little bit of powder. I like using, this is the Spotlight Duster F37, but since it is just like a huge crease brush, I put a little bit of powder here just to help darken that some because the powder is tinted. I'm not putting too much because I don't want it to end up looking weird. Then I have this e.l.f. Kabuki brush that I like to use just to powder the rest of my face. Then I go back with this Spotlight Duster. My blush, it's almost gone. And just circular motion, holding the brush at the end, not way up high. Like, not this, because I don't want the brush to be really concentrated. I want to lightly just dust it on. I really try to keep the color, especially the blush color, way up high on my cheekbones because I tend to get pretty red easily in the face. And so I don't need the red or the pink there. I need it up here. Do a little highlight and I'm going to put that in the same brush and just above, you know, if you look. The light is naturally hitting me here, so that's where I'm going to try to keep it and accentuate that natural glowy reflection. Let's put a little something under the eye. Maybe I'll use a tiny bit of that dark. And just on this lower lash line, gently put a little in. And then continue it out to where it meets the rest. I'm only taking it to about just under the iris. And I think I'll grab a little bit of that original transition color and put that here. So from the iris to the inner corner. Perfect. Now mascara, 
no trout mouth, hopefully. I like to get the brush right in and kind of wiggle it to get those eyelash hairs to really get in there and get product on them. So wiggle at the base and then just drag them through. I don't do the wiggle it through technique on the bottom. I just put a little bit on there to give them some definition. And I also don't have a Q-tip here, but I did get some mascara under my eye, so I'm gonna have to correct that. Here you go. Mommy. Yes? When I, when I was in here, you weren't talking. Cause I was doing my, uh, my eyeshadow. Now we're gonna try the lip trick that I showed you last week, but I have a different color pencil and then I just have a nice glossy gloss. Last week what I did, I used that bright red just because that was the pencil that I had and the lipstick that I had, but because I looked into my tackle box and I found an actual gloss, I think that's gonna work a little bit better. So to recap, I'm gonna use my natural lip shape but what I want to do is make the top lip appear a little bigger. I'm pretty happy with the bottom lip, but one of the ways to do that is to give the illusion that the lips are smaller width-wise, which will make them seem bigger in height, as well as I'm going to overline just barely on the top and bottom lips. So that gives it, you know, two millimeters maybe of additional color height, but I'm not gonna bring that all the way out. Cause you can see these corners of my mouth are kind of pinched anyway. And so I'm just gonna accentuate that, that it's sort of pinched. So wherever that color first is showing, That's where my line will start to go up. And you did that again. You weren't talking again. Well, yeah, because now I'm going to be putting makeup on instead of talking. <laughs> okay, you can see here that I've done the overlining. Oh, Sweet Pea wants to come and join in the fun. Turn. Because ah. I'm awfully close to the thing. Now turn your legs in. So in addition to working full time, I also am a solo mom to the best kid in the world. So my schedule is pretty full, but I still find time to learn makeup and hopefully you guys find the time to come join me. So you can see I've overlined the top and the bottom, but where that pinched area is, I didn't take the line all the way out to there. I've also colored in with this pencil, these outside areas. It almost looks like you're drawing on your lip. I am drawing on my lips. And coloring in those outside areas is effectively contouring so that's giving, it's making it look like it's further back. Now this is a really cheap lip pencil. And the reason why I'm able to get the color to kind of feather inward is because I did put on a nice greasy lip balm at the very start of all this. You do want the color to come in a little. You can do that with your finger. You can do that with just putting a little bit tiny pencil strokes in and then, you know, pushing your lips together. All right, you gotta hold on, baby. I think I'm about to run out of time. So then I'm gonna put my gloss on. I wanna tell them something. Aren't tell them, cause we're almost out of time. We're gonna go to the pool. Yeah, we're gonna go to the pool. Where? Now I have the gloss on. 
Looks nice. Mommy, hold me. I'm not about to fall. Okay. Crazy. So there's the whole look. After I get dressed and everything, I'll come back and do my intro to this video. Um, I do think it looks kind of wild, but it's really just because I'm not used to having this much color on my face. So, let's go out a little bit. Be so bloopy while I look. <laughs> bye. That's what I was going to do. Yeah? You want to say bye? Bye, guys. Subscribe. Oh, yeah. Hit subscribe. Come join us again. Can't reach the button. Hold on. Join our video. Say something quick. Enjoy our videos. Click the click that circle button for more videos. Yep, click subscribe for more videos. Bye. Bye guys.